This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, all right. Are, are we well, live? Well, we're, we're live. Tom, <laughs> we had Tom a moment ago. This has been, this has been <laughs> an adventure, been... To, say, to say the least. The, the weather is bad. Tech issues are plenty. Tell you what, just just because we're uh, just sort of winging it here right off the get, let's let's bring in Phil Mackey just yeah, off the Phil, top of the wow. ship. Phil can the ship. I feel Man. like I've walked into like a smoldering plane crash or something. Like like yeah. serve, I'm surveying the field. Like what's happening right now? Feels about that way right yeah, now. Yeah, the fact that we're we're live right is a miracle. We'll just. <laughs> All right. Am I? Are we? St- is the show starting now, or are we still? Yeah. Did we do an opening segment, and now I'm coming in as the encore act? Congratulations! You are the opening segment. <laughs> wow. The opening. Well, we got an honor. We, we have to actually have to go to break first, but you know. <laughs> there we go. I mean, these guys. Even on the show for a year, you don't know when the first break goes. It really. Oh, Way I, to pay trust, attention. Trust me, it's on my radar. <laughs> We got uh, Phil. We uh, I sit down at my computer. Everything's good, and I'm everything's wonderful. I, we jump up, and I cannot hear them. And that tells me one thing: I have cleaners come into this studio and clean it every Friday, and they touch something they should have touched and didn't bother to reset. It. You got to so, put some gigantic "do not touch" signs on everything. Yes, are people that stupid? I mean, generally, yes. The answer is yes to that question. <laughs> generally, yes. Pretty much any context of are people that stupid, the answer is yes, Tom. <laughs> okay, we'll take a very quick break, come back, and then you'll be the king of all sports reporting. You damn right I will be. You horn tootin'. We'll be right back. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? You want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want. Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota, started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida, and now can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend, Matt, I love that word Minnesotan, by the way, Uh, He can help you. Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new friends, your local friends, and contact Matt and Kristen. Matter of fact, I have to today because I want them to sell something for me. So I will be one of their clients. Well, of course, unless they turn me down. You know, that might happen. No, I'll uh, I'm be talking to Matt and Kristen later on today. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com. Or call Matt at 612-791-2345. 612-791-2345. And work with local professionals you can trust. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. See, that's all you need to know. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. If you've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one and don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's extremely knowledgeable and will help you get top dollar. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back. Phil Mackey joins us from Score North. Uh, one rule today. Do not say the word Innsway on this show. 
What do you mean? It's it's opening week. The Twins play regular season baseball on Thursday. That you're you're sucks. already this depressed about the Twins three there days eight, before the season opener starts. They're like eight and twenty. Who cares? It's spring training. Uh, well, people who are twenty and six. That's who. <laughs> We should go back and do a study of teams that dominated spring training versus didn't. uh, Maybe it's a hot take. I don't think it matters that they struggled in spring spring training. I think they're going to be just fine. Being suckwad and struggling are two completely different things. So if they were 11 and what's the math? What are they, 8 and 20? If they were 12 and 16, would you feel a little bit better? Yeah, I'd be fine, absolutely. But, okay. You know, you get even close to halfway home. It is spring tra- training. I do understand that. But it's not just spring training. They're getting blown out of every game. Maybe every they're just conserving they're energy, Tom. Oh, Maybe. yes. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> exactly you don't want to throw all your 98-mile-an-hour pitches, you know, in spring training. you got to save a little something. I suppose. Look, I'll be there watching the game. Well, the other thing that pisses me off is even though it says the game is on – you know, this or that, or I tune it in, and the game's not on there. Oh, it man. might be available other places, but apparently because I'm from Minnesota, I can't watch it for, I don't know how God knows this, but, you know. Well, that's what's great about baseball is their uh, marketing strategy is just make it as hard as possible for yeah. anyone to consume your product. That'll I really know. hook the young viewers. Phil, why, Phil, is it like this? Why would they want to make it so hard? I would have watched about five or six games by now. I have seen zero because they won't let me watch them. Yeah. You know, I think the the spring training thing is is different than the, the regular season issue is tied up in these local TV contracts and blackout, you know, restrictions. As far as I know, spring training games do not fall under. You can do whatever you want with spring training games. So why would you not just have like three camera people run the simulcast of your radio team and put the games on a TV channel or put yeah. the games on your yep. YouTube channel or something. Something. Yeah. It's, put it up on the internet. I could sit here and watch this screen. I'd love to do that. And scream at it for three hours. Yes. Oh, damn it. It'll be Son bad. of a bitch. <laughs> okay. I gotta, I gotta ask you about the grand trifecta going on right now in the United States of America and just how filthy this country really is. And I love being an American, but this country is the filthiest it's ever been. First of all, you got Joe Biden, who's filthy. Then you got Donald Trump, who's filthy. And then the number one baseball in all of baseball, he's filthy, too. Although he's trying to push it off on his buddy, who they fired. <laughs> Shohei Otani. Otani. Yeah. Has he, okay, so he was supposed to speak to the media today. I don't know if that's uh-huh. happened yet. But he was supposed to. <laughs> so he he had not, because they've basically, they've and the PR team from the Dodgers and Major League Baseball has shielded him from questions, which is ridiculous, by the way. The quicker you can... Come up with some sort of response to the media, the better. But yeah, yeah it's really yeah. interesting. I just don't. What, what is with all this filthy? I mean, you just signed a seven hundred million dollar contract. You don't want to put that in jeopardy, do you? Really, over five million in winnings or losses or whatever it is. Now I've heard from so there's there's uh, been some people that are on the inside of these gambling rings that have gone oh. on podcasts and gone on social media and have said, "Hey, I'm plugged in." It's not just four and a half million dollars. It's Ooh. much, much more than that. Ooh. The but the biggest question remains: Did he bet on baseball? Because and I know there's like there's like two different layers of potential oh, okay. illegal activity here. There's the did you bet on baseball that could get you banned based on the Pete Rose precedent, and then there's did you and the answer sounds like yes. Did you place bets with some sort of illegal bookmaker or right. underground? You know web of bookies oh web. i personally don't care as much about that if he's betting on baseball i think it's a, a really interesting sort of uh moral crossroads that rob manfred is at and again this is not a political statement it's the the shape of america statement is everybody in charge now just a filthy pig i mean what <laughs> in the hell happened to the united states of america my you know god I mean? you got two guys running for president they both should probably be in prison I'm not saying that I believe that, but apparently everybody else does. When's the last time you felt like the country wasn't being run by a filthy pig? It's been a long time, I will (laughs) tell you that. But it's worse than it's ever been now. I mean, my God, these people. Look back at the last several presidents we've had. Either didn't know what they were doing or were too busy donging the girls in the closet. I mean, Jesus, I just, 
this is our leadership. This is really our leadership, huh? You can't even, you're not even smart enough to hide things like that, which if you tried to hide it, they'd never find out you were doing that. There's no way. I just want to, I just want to highlight your incredibly creative use of the word donging right there. Donging baby. I mean, that is, what no we, it, when it ends in ing, is that an adverb? Yes, it must be. That's what I'm donging. Thinking. That's a great use donging. of an adverb right there. I got to tell you something, Phil. Everybody who tuned in just said, you know, it feels so smooth. We didn't even notice the first eight minutes were missing. Well, people are just probably just waiting. It, it's like yes. when the, the concert's supposed to start at nine o'clock and you've got the opening act, right? But then like no one comes out until 930 and you're just, you're waiting, you're yeah. wondering, getting who's an extra the, cocktail in you. That's probably what happened this morning. Who's the woman that does that? Lori or Laura something that she always shows up like two hours late for her concerts. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Just shows up two hours late. Yeah. This what the hell. I'll just walk out whenever I feel like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I like sitting here for three hours on sitting on my ass. It's just great. Kanye does that. Doesn't Kanye do that? Yeah, where he'll just, it'll be like four hours. It'll be one in the morning and people are just kind of waiting for Kanye. Uh, so. I can't think of an act that I'd go see if it were over 10 minutes late, I wouldn't get up and leave. <laughs> Dude, if I see a concert that starts at like eight o'clock PM, I, now I'm, st- I'm doing the math on, okay, well, the opener's going to yeah. go. If there's two openers, now we're talking like an hour and a half, two hours. I can't stay awake. I'm not even 40 yet, and I can't stay awake <laughs> past 9.15. I understand that. I got no <laughs> problem with that whatsoever. So should uh, the three of you get to vote on this, and anybody wants to call in and vote as well, should I be nervous about my twins? AJ, what's your vote? Ooh, we didn't ah. vote ooh. I'll, I'll vote last. I'll say I'll say a little bit because I think it's their division to lose. I think yeah, right. I think right. I mean they already have some guys uh, on the IL to start the season, some pretty key pieces, but the rest of the competition is just so poor that really it's their division to lose. So I think playoffs at least are in the cards for them. Yeah, I w- I would say no to being nervous or you know panicking All now, right. but All right. I feel the time to panic will be sooner in the season than you. Would. <laughs> Well, that's great news. Yeah. Oh, game two then instead of game one. Yes. That's yes. what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Wait till after opening day. All so, right. and you know my answer. It's it's no on the panic meter. But the, but I'll give you the why because I haven't really given you much of the why yet. I know that they have a bad spring training record. They've had a bunch of injuries now. Like half their bullpen is starting the season on the injured list, and so it could be a little. It actually, could be a little rocky out of the gate with their bullpen. They're pitching. Right. But they have, I think, the best left side of the infield. In the entire American League, you've got Very Carlos good. Correa, who's not going to be bound by a foot injury. That he he grinded through a foot injury the entire year last year. So best defensive shortstop. He's a guy that's going to be one of their best hitters. And then Royce Lewis. Again, this is all provided that Royce Lewis stays healthy, which he's had a hard time doing. Yeah. Royce Lewis carried that team through the playoff stretch. He had four grand slams. Like it's like he was putting up unprecedented numbers offensively. So I think with those two guys anchoring shortstop and third base, and you've got one of the best hitting catchers, you're really solid up the middle. You've got, yep. plus you've got the the number one prospect or number two, because Walker Jenkins, I think is the number one prospect, but Brooks Lee had a great spring and he could be up at some point in May. So ah, they've got a lot of talent and they do need to make another trade right. for a pitcher at some point, but they have a lot of talent in that lineup. I still am not happy. They, they didn't hang on to, Sonny Gray, and I know he didn't want to stay and all the rest of it, but, you know, if you offer enough money, he would have stayed. He's also starting the season with, like, a hamstring pull on the injured list. So you get a little older, and, the, you know, those hamstrings don't fire like they used to. Mm -hmm. That's happening to him. They do need to add a starting pitcher at some point, 100%. Yes, sir. Okay, so I got some hope now anyway. That's the good thing. A little bit of hope, yeah. A little bit more than you started the day with, hopefully, yeah. Oh, God, I just got a message from management that uh, I didn't realize today was March Monday, March 25th. Uh, sometime today, each of the three of you is going to have $450 million taken out of your savings account. I just wanted you to know that. Today's the day for that across the board. All right. $450 million? I just want to make sure my... Yeah, four hundred yeah, million. I gotta okay. transfer some stuff over, but <laughs> I gotta move yeah, yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> How, now, answer this question for me. On either side of that, would you want to be him? Because if you've got four hundred fifty million, that's a pretty good thing. But if they're going to take it all, that's not a good thing at all. Well, but but 
he so he doesn't have four hundred fifty million dollars no. accessible. We know. So the no. question is, how much do you value like the Trump Tower in you know New York right. City? Like, isn't that the next step where they would start to put values on his on his real estate properties? I would think. I would think there was, a, I still, and again, I got no dog in this fight. I'm not even watching it much. I just see the highlights on the TV. I, I, you know, they got to do what they got to do. But what, what did, is she saying he did that calls for a almost half billion dollar uh, bond? What did he do? How much time left do we have? Did he do? <laughs> I mean, there's a long, there's, you don't just like seize four hundred fifty million dollars from someone without never several years before. of court of court processes. It's never happened before, ever. It's I mean, time I, in American history. I'm fascinated to see how the day ends because there's a lot of things. <laughs> exactly. I mean, seriously, I mean, we literally have like it, whether you whether you vote left or right, right, we have one of the top two presidential candidates that is literally <laughs> sitting underneath this layer of legal mess right now, and. Um, May or may not have properties start to be seized from him in the next couple of weeks. So, and then the other guy now they had a big announcement on the national news this morning that he they're filing corruption charges against our sitting president. So we're doing really well. Right Do you? Now. I have one more Jesus. question on this. Yep. Do you have? I know we obviously we have. Uh, you have to be a certain age to be able to be eligible to be president. Do you feel yeah. like? 80 years old and older is too old to be a sitting United States or to be elected president. Best way to, he's not asking you to stop bobbing your heads, you two pills. <laughs> yeah. Well, try to influence my answer. <laughs> I saw that. Let me put it this way. I'm not anywhere near that old and I wouldn't even want to be president. Why would you want to be president when you're 80? I, I just like, no, I want to go sit in a chair on a beach uh, and have a cocktail if I'm still drinking or just, you yeah. know, Stare at the misses. It's just okay. it's it's just odd that you know you literally have to worry about someone getting elected who's past the average age yeah. that somebody yeah. would right. What's the average life expectancy for a male and a female? I think females are like seventy seven, males are maybe seventy five. So yeah, I don't know. I don't mean to be ageist. Not trying no, to be ageist, no. but it's a but thing. I'm it's you, a thing. I'm seventy two years old and I would not want to be president of the United States. If I haven't gone beyond that point by the time I'm seventy two years old, then I'm the one who screwed up. I, I have no I have first of all no interest in that kind of power anyway. What if we made you president of like your association? You know, you have like an not, association. <laughs> yes, but I, there's no way I'm ever becoming <laughs> Hey Tom, I called the bitch about something. Oh great, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> That's can we convert the dude. tennis carts to pickleball carts next year, Tom? Can you make sure that we... Oh, yeah. They all go in pickleball now. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. That's great. I, uh, no, I, I tell you, I know you got to get uh, hit the road here, but I, I will tell you this. I just, um, you know, you got Trump president, you got Biden president. I mean, if they get elected, there's nothing I could do about it. So why would I be upset by it? What do I, why would I care? There's nothing you can do about it, right? Yeah. And I think I still and, and, and even if because I think you just voiced how a lot of people feel, which is I'm not in love with either of these main options. Right. But I feel like not voting or participating is also not a great. But I feel like a lot of people are going to just choose to not participate in the election this upcoming November, which okay. is unfortunate. We'll, clo we'll close with a three beat here. Which is the worst one of them all? That Biden has been proven to be corrupt. That Trump has been proven to be corrupt. Or... You could have Aaron Rodgers as our vice president. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about that is Aaron Rodgers at the end of the season, he went on a rant. So, you know, he missed the, yes, the, yes. the he, he made it seem like he was going to come back from an Achilles injury after three months, which was all BS. He, he just his ego needed to make it seem like he was going to be the fastest to ever come back. He's the biggest right. narcissist in the entire league. No doubt. But he literally ranted to the media through the media to his teammates, hey, anything that doesn't have to do with football and winning, get it out of here. We need to we need to sniff it out of this locker room and get it out of here. Meanwhile, here's your starting quarterback, hypocritically, apparently going to be a vice presidential candidate come this fall. I, know. So. I heard he might. I've never met him, never talked to him. I've heard he's just a raging prick. Yeah, he's one of those guys that's never been wrong about anything in his life. It's always somebody else's fault. I mean, he's one of the most talented quarterbacks to ever walk the face of the earth. But AJ is a talented quarterback. Oh, you're not talking about AJ right now. I'm sorry. 
Oh, AJ could sling it back in Pee Wee, man. <laughs> Come on, bring it on, baby. AJ and I were probably both great left guards in seventh grade football. That's <laughs> the left guard, baby. Well, well, we'll keep an eye on it and all the rest of it. The world is just right. I am so ha- I just I got back on Facebook after 12 years. I was off for 12 years. I'm so glad I went on with a very positive attitude, nothing negative. And what I like now is they filter out the really nasty things apparently. I didn't I don't know what they do. Or yeah, what they've got like do. certain trigger words that they'll hide in your comments. Yeah. Which that's good. I think that's wonderful. I don't want I don't want to go on Facebook to be pissed off. I'm having a ball. See, you this know? is why I left Facebook a couple years ago because I need it all unfiltered, Tom. I want you. Some guy last week told me that my dead dad would be ashamed of me because of a football opinion on Twitter, and I love it. Bring there all the go. uncensored criticism into my timeline. There you have it. <laughs> yeah, the only problem I have with that is everybody's a tough guy. I uh, God, I hate that. And they're all anonymous. You know, oh, yeah, they can't sir, put anonymous. their real. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like I'm Phil Mackey, you're Tom Bernard, and they are like Bill six four seven three two nine eight, right? <laughs> so even if you run into them on the street, you wouldn't know it's them. <laughs> it's a bag over oh, their head. No. All right, Palomino. Well, thank you for your patience today. I appreciate it, and we will talk to you on Friday. Sounds good, guys. See ya. Thanks a lot, Phil Mackey. Ladies and gentlemen, take a break. Be right back. Some other hun yucks coming on. What's his name again? Egret. Yeah, Egret. Yep. Egret coming up. Um, oh my God! I just looked down and it says March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning, and it still is March for another what? Well, counting today, another week, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning. And your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res Platinum rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue. What these limited time offers, three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129, a $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. So the Gotta Love It guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today. Be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard Special. Zero res, spell it forward or backward, it spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. What do you think of that action, ladies and gentlemen? Mike Lindell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all of your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. Take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb. Dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. I just spotted something I've never seen in the history of my radio career. We're going to have a guest on two different shows for two hours? Yeah, that was something that neither of us booked. I believe that was... um, Somebody must have misbooked it because... 
that is i don't know but there's no way we can do that yeah i was gonna ask you about that before our yeah uh, uh, somebody should call me well, when did you first see this um i that 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 guest i saw on friday and i had asked yeah, you know, i really wish you would have called me. i wish somebody would have called me because it's, i could have taken care of this this is what i'm talking about and art sears by the way is getting sick and not getting calls back too so we got to take care of that but yeah we can't have somebody on for two hours that makes we can have her on at 8 45 till 9 and if she wants to hang around until you know 9 45 or whatever that's fine but i mean what she can do sit around where we're between shows for 15 minutes and do nothing Okay, so what do you think, Chris? Do you think everybody heard me that reach out to Uncle Tommy? And we, we've talked about this guest thing before. This stuff keeps happening, and it's got to stop. That's all I'm saying. I'd love uh, to have her on both shows. That's fine. <clears throat> well, you're probably going to be jealous to know, but on Minnesota Live today, we have a segment that is purely about ham. <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge ham. I'm, I'm one of the few people on earth that think ham is okay at best. <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I'm with you on that. Yeah, I find okay. that ham can be an affordable cut of meat for feeding a big group of people. So I will sometimes fall back on it. But other than that, kind of just a holiday thing. And will you have ham for Easter? Um, no, because we're going out for dinner on Easter. Well, Easter, well, Bron- East, well, Easter is my wife's birthday this year. So oh, that's that deal. It's a double double dip kind of deal this year so that's like a brunch situation or no it'll be dinner dinner yeah Catherine's not going to brunch well she'd go to brunch but it's not going to be your birthday celebration going to brunch gotcha gotcha you know what i'm saying yeah uh all about the snow here this morning in the old uh five eyewitness news newsroom so as... andy told me it's not as bad as they said it was going to be though uh well i don't know what how we gauge what they said our, our guy said six to 12 and we got eight and a half. So Dude, really you got eight and a half inches of snow. I yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. That was Man. the official, that was the official measurement at the airport. I think maybe um, the roads are maybe a little bit better this morning than people anticipated, which is good. They're super slushy, but as far as like um, it hasn't been like one of those commutes, you know, where it takes you like an hour and a half to drive across town. It, it, it's been a little better than that, which is good. So that's the ticket. Channel 5's Chris Eggert is brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48 minute evaluation at 952 925 5608. So did, did St. Cloud get two feet? They were talking about two feet in St. Cloud. Did that happen? I'm not sure. I didn't see what the totals were further up north. I know it was going to be more, more snow as you moved up north. Um, this stuff was so. It was like my buddy um, referred to it as mashed potatoes. That's what it was. That was like, like clearing your driveway. It's just one of those like oh, really, really gross, wet. I mean, it's pretty typical for March, but um, so I think what I'm saying is the snowfall totals might not have been as huge as what people thought because the snow is so heavy. It like packs down. So when they get that measurement, it's, it's kind of squished. You know what I'm saying? I do understand, no question about it. So you'll get through, but eight, I did not know you got eight and a half inches of snow. It's, they said it yeah. was going to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, uh, uh, I don't know. It snowed, you know, whatever. It's, uh, hopefully that'll be the last one of the year, but probably not. Who knows? So they say it, they, they, they predicted it will be the last one of the year, but like you said, who knows? It snowed three feet on Halloween once, so they don't know what the hell's going on. Right. And I feel like we had one like several years ago that was like pushing right up into into may which you know can happen so that's indeed that's how it goes uh powerball is big tonight uh powerball and mega millions is another big thing today um powerball's 800 million dollars that drawing is tonight and then mega millions is like 1.1 billion right now and that'll probably grow i think that um that's on tuesday night so there you go there you have didn't somebody just win it a, a powerball about a month ago something like that i think it's been further out than a month ago because oh, i don't okay. think the jackpot would be this big yeah that's true that's true. um but yeah i i sent my 18 year old kid to the convenience store last night i'm like son go get us a couple of lottery tickets and he's like why and i and i told him and he's like 
He goes, kind of a waste of money. Wouldn't you be better off investing it? I'm like, what? Shut up. Oh, see? <laughs> see? That's like, a good point, though. Like, who the hell are you? <laughs> they have a magnificent point. That's all I have to say. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. That's oh, it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's it. That's it for everything? That's, yeah, that's what I got pretty much today. All right. Well, I, I really appreciate your help. with it. You sure you don't want to come on at 845 this morning so we'll have like 15 people on at once? What do you think? I um, I listen, I have a very important ham segment to get over there and do. And <laughs> yeah, there you go. If I'm not there for the ham segment, the whole thing, the whole train goes off the tracks. It'll come apart at the seams. There's no question. <laughs> you, you, you heard it here first. All right, Pally, thank you for your time and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good rest of the day, guys. Bye. Thanks a lot. Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. Chris Eggert, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a break. Be right back and do whatever we're going to do right after this. Let's take a second to talk about my bank. That would be North American Banking Company. You've heard me talking about them for a long time. Now, when they opened in 1998, they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers, where you know your banker and they know you. Well, a lot has changed since 1998. This commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities has not. So if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my bankers at North American Banking Company? Go to nabanco.com or stop by any one of their six Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw Bryant. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market, the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation 48-minute evaluation. you got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Uh, I am a paid endorser, by the way. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Sanny joins us right now. Bob Sands for your sports brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyer seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. What's happening, Bobby? Well, Tom, I'm shedding a little bit of a tear. The, the goals, they're out of the NIT. It's over no, for them. Gopher? Oh, really? this is horrible. Horrible. Oh, such, such an important tournament to be, Bob. Wow. I know. No one else wanted to play in it. They still can't win a game. So they want what they're going to do. Fun. Good for them. Woohoo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you, the, now, are, are, are any of you following the NCAA? Nope. A little bit. I'm pulling for NC State. They went into the ACC tournament. They lost like four in a row, five or six. Then they won the tournament, and now they're the, the lowest seed to advance to the Sweet 16. 11. So I'm looking for them to do something. That'd be fun. I I pull yep. for San Diego State, but Brian Byron Brian Dutch's team, but they got UConn coming up, so that'll be a tough one. Utah's a little com- yeah. For, I, I I used to be a huge NCAA basketball fan, but I haven't watched it in years and years and years because it was such a mess at one time for the Gophers. 
Well, I started watching the deal. I forgot that they were taking over uh, CBS for like three weeks. Yeah. So I, I flipped over to watch some of my shows on Thursday night, and they weren't on. No question about it. I don't know. Like I said, college sports. I used to be a huge college sports fan, but I'm I not anymore. The university. Oh, Jesus. I knew I'd get a call. I literally looked at my phone and knew somebody would call me. Does no one know what love time the, the show is on? Oh, you know what that is? What? You don't know what song that is? No, no. I'm saying what you were saying who it is. No, I love the song is what I'm saying. And I couldn't give you yeah. the name of it. I just I'm very familiar with it. You hear it all the it's time. It's my phone. It's my phone. And the music is Don't Call Us, We'll Call You. That's the <laughs> name of the song. So take a hint for Christ's sake. How about that? Now, action? my phone will blow up for saying this, but is it Joe from Louisville with some pertinent information? Not so far. Good guy. Not so far. Oh, my God. The roads are completely covered in ice is what that was all about. Did you guys have ice coming in? Uh, not too bad. My drive is a little shorter, so I yeah, did some of the roads. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't – there was a couple of icy patches, but it was – overall was a decent drive in. Yeah, it was, it was It was a little slick. I had a I had a, a, a snow, like, packing on top of a minivan that flew off. It looked like a mattress just flew oh, off and somebody had to swerve out of the way. So thankfully that wasn't me, but uh, yeah, clean off your cars, people. Yeah. It might be a good, yeah. I've never understood that anyway. I'm going to drive down the road with seven inches of snow on my roof. What? <laughs> How stupid are you? Most people will guy. not. I mean, they clear the windshield. They're not mm-hmm. going to clear off the yeah. roof. Yep. You're absolutely. I don't understand. First of all, once you get off your ass, go get a job so you can have a garage. How about that action? Hey, some of us, I've, I don't have a garage because we've got a farm, and a garage is not part of the, uh, the whole farm. We got all these outbuildings. I could drive them all into the pole barn, but that's a pain mm-hmm. in the butt. So I've got, I have the mattress on my roof. Don't you have like 15,000 different jobs? How can you not afford to, you know, get everything? Put a garage up? Yeah. It's, okay, because there's no place around the way it's positioned. I'd oh, have to. Okay. It's, there's nothing close to the house anyway. It's not that big a deal. All right, we tried to help out, but you won't let us, so forget right, it. I appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Sands of your sports is brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyer seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. So, Sandy, we've decided we don't want to talk any sports at all because the teams are not very good. Works for me. Oh, hey, you're twins so this week, Tom. <laughs> this week. But Bob, they're they're terrible right now. Okay, again, it's the exhibition. And you know what? You'll feel better. Put it this way: they get swept by Kansas City, then be in torment. Until that happens, don't worry yeah. about it. Okay, uh, you know what? That's good advice from Uncle Bob right there. Wait till that first three game set, and we'll go from there. Yeah, see what okay. happens. Okay, I'll do that. I promise. The one, the one thing that because we've talked about it, where they haven't, you know, they they cut back the payroll. They do have good guys if they stay healthy. If Royce Lewis and Correa and Buxton stay healthy, could be a really fun lineup to watch. But Mm -hmm. this is like after the great season that the Lions had, win the division, go to the championship game. Not that the Twins did went to the ALCS, but imagine if the Lions with the uh, Detroit fans how they'd revolt if they said, you know, we're gonna cut back on salary and not bring anybody in. I know. Can you believe it? But the twin, I mean, Twins fans are so easygoing. There's no uproar about it. It's the kind of thing should be what the pitchforks and, uh, you know, and, and <laughs> you know, whether they hold the pitchforks and they've got the fire th- th- going after it. It's it just, uh, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're too tolerant, but maybe it'll be fine. They did win. It was a bad, bad division, and there's no indication it's going to get much better. There you have it. I suppose not. I don't know. Well, I'll be watching the Twins. I'm a huge Twins fan. I'll be watching them. Will I be crabby? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. When have you not been crabby? You mean about sports or life in general? Well, sports in particular. Sports in particular. I suppose that's probably true. Yes, you're right. Because I'm a Minnesota hey, I loved, fan. I was. What? I loved your Palm Sunday thing. Your video. Oh, you saw the. That's a true story, yeah, by the way. Should I? Should I tell the fellows? Sure. What it's tell all the about? story in case everyone didn't hear it. I recorded a video for Palm Sunday, 
because when we were kids going to St. Anne's in eighth grade over in North Minneapolis, 26th and Queen, we used to tell our parents, all of us were going to church together. And of course, none of us ever went to church. We just told the parents, oh yeah, we're all going as a group. We're going to go to church. No question. All of a sudden we're playing a little baseball. And I said, you know what? We got a problem. And this day it would be a problem. But back then, can you believe this? But back then they used to leave churches open 24 hours a day. Do you remember that, Bob? I do. And now you can't, they're locked tighter in the drum. They're locked up because there's a lot of gold and jewels and stuff in there. (laughs) So that's that deal. But um, in any case, so I said, we better go over. If we don't go come home with a palm, our parents are going to know we didn't go to church, and that's going to be hell to pay, no question about it. And I can't say exactly what he said, but I said, oh, okay, let's go over to St. Anne's. We'll go up there. Because like I said, it was open 24 hours a day. It was really weird. You go in there whenever time you want. So we go in there, and there are the palms up on the altar. So you're, we went up to the sacristy, which you're not supposed to do either anyway. You're not supposed to be going up there. But we went up there, and we're looking through the palms, you know, to bring one home. And, hey, look, Mom, I got this at St. Anne's. Because that was not a lie. I did get it at St. Anne's, right? Yeah. Except for one of my friends. It was Guy, one of my buddies. He's no longer with us, unfortunately. But he's going, he's going, ah, ah, ah. He keeps making these noises. And all of a sudden, in the sacristy, in St. Anne's, a nice Catholic boy said, Oh, man, all they got left up are the effed up ones. <laughs> Only he didn't say effed up. He <laughs> said the full word. I'm like, oh, if we didn't get struck by lightning, maybe either there, God doesn't exist or he's a great God or something. I don't know. I will never. I was like, did you actually just say what I thought you said? But he was right. They were the effed up ones. But, you know, what are you going to do? Right. All right, and I got now you had you were holding two palms. Was one of them Catherine's or did he, do you get two per person? Yeah, no, one one was Catherine's, All one right. was mine. I think she took both of them, though. Something like that. Well, who has the palm? Who? Where do you get palms? I mean, there's I not a palm no. store. I have a question for you, Bob. Yeah. You ever been to Florida? Well, not up here. We have them up here, Tom. There's not a palm <laughs> store up here. And also, they're not like from the palm trees, are they? They just go, uh, yeah, nobody know. climbs up. Yeah, you're probably. I don't know where they're from, actually, but a palm frond. I don't know. I I wondered that in Jersey and here. Where do you get them? I don't know. They have them shipped in or whatever. But yeah, Palm Sunday. It's Easter Sunday on Sunday again. Double dipping Easter Sunday and my wife's birthday on the same day. What do you think of that? Well, you give her an Easter basket and you could put a little something, a nice little bauble in it. It's going to be a three beat. It'd be a wonderful three beat because it's my wife's birthday. It's Easter Sunday. And it's also the day my mother died. So thanks a lot. Not that actual date, or I know it no, was Easter. Easter. It was Easter yeah. Sunday. Yeah, it makes it tough regardless. Yeah, you know, three the three beat. But other than that, everything's good. Well, that's it. What, what was how close was the actual date to this Easter coming up? Was it a day uh, or two, couple, or was a couple it? days? Yeah, a few okay. days. It was a few days. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All right. So what else is happening, Sanny? Well, yes, because I hunkered down. You hunkered you know, down? I, I, well, I hunkered down yesterday. You know, the weather and everything. Oh, because of the weather, yeah. Yeah, so I watched, because this guy, he's a big shot. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant, which I hadn't seen. Phenomenal. It really, My God, that movie is terrific. <laughs> I thought How it was a TV the, series. It was that as well? What? Is that the same? Yeah, it's the, is it the new one where they're all in the... It's the, the movie. Man, about them. Oh, I think I'm thinking of something. Guy Ritchie has a new... It's a one-word title. He has a new series out. It's a British series about a guy that inherits this mansion. The Gentleman. That is the a The Gentleman. That's what I'm thinking of. Yep, oh, did you watch it yet? Phenomenal. Oh, it's terrific. You watch the whole thing or you're still in the midst of uh, it? No, I'm in the midst of it. Yep. Oh, you're going to love the way it it, uh, it clear, cleans itself up. Have you ever not liked something Guy Ritchie did? I have to think of everything he's done. He's done a lot. I, well, put it this way. No. I would say off the top, right. no. I, I, he, he knows how to put together a story. No but the covenant, it. It, it's on Prime Video. See, I'm a cheap one. I don't like to spend money because there's so many movies out there. I will do it if, like, I told my, I tried to coax my son to come over to watch the uh, Beekeeper with me, five ninety nine on Prime Video. But I won't pay the money for it because I there's yeah. so many options, and I just it's a principal thing. Unless somebody comes over, then I'll be a big shot. Oh, but 
Of course, I don't do it at nineteen ninety nine. It's got to be five ninety nine or less. So I, I want to yes, watch that. I understand that, Bob, because there are some. Oh, you can buy this for only forty nine dollars. It's like what? What are you nuts? You got to take three people to a movie theater for that much dough. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. It gets well. We're trying to watch that series Vera. It's been on for like which one's that? Years. I'm like, it's it's a British woman. Uh, it's solving crime, that kind of stuff. Okay. Here, the lead woman in it. We watched the first episode. Every episode after this is five bucks. Now imagine watching 20 Ugh. series. So it's $100 a year for 20 years. So it's it cost me $2,000 to watch. I think not. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be watching that. You're absolutely right. 2000 bucks to watch a TV show. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, let's not do that, Joey. No. Who was oh. playing music in the background? Ah, that cool. was Joe from Louisville. <laughs> Funny, Bob. <laughs> okay, Joe, you could wait till after we're done because now Tom's mad at me. Not you, me. I never liked Bob. I want you to know that. So just part of the whole deal. Okay, Joe, why don't you hit Tom with something now while he's on the show? See how he likes that. See how that one goes over for yeah, you. Yeah, you want to see this phone that I just turned off? So go ahead, hit me away all you want because my phone's turned off. I wait think. a minute. It, it, Phone or iPad? That thing's huge, unless it was the uh, the view of it. Is that one of the bigger phones? No, it's the regular size. Oh, it looks really close when you put look at it. It looks enormous it so close up. There you go, blocking everything out. Yeet, yeet, yeet. <laughs> All right, Sandy, what else you got, Pally? Uh, we can talk about Harrison Smith. They redid his deal, but I don't think you care about that. He's uh, saving him more oh. cap money. You know, he'll finish his career here. whoop de doo cap, though. Thing. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, absolutely. All so, right, well, Sandy, a brilliant report, I thought. Really? This might be the weirdest show I've ever been on in my entire life. I Where's your other? Was he on? I missed him because I came on a little later than she, I normally she, do. No, she didn't show up, but uh, but we've made it very clear. We're, we're going to call Uncle Tommy from now on on Friday night when something like that is booked because I would have said no. We're going to have to check in on every guest apparently or something. I don't know. Well, what, what guest are you talking about? Ann Bauer. was. She's going to be on the, the family show. I know that. But I didn't know she was going to be on this show. What does she do? She's a writer. Very good, oh. actually. She's a really good guest. But they had her on for like two straight hours. It's like that we just don't do things like that. Two hours? Whoa. Yes. She must write long, long books. Including the 15 minutes between the two shows. So she would have been a little bored at that one. <laughs> do you think? Are you giving her the whole show on the family? Mm, I don't know what time she's coming on. Yeah I, yeah, I don't mind doing that on the family because it's a different kind of a show. Yeah. You know. But yeah, we'll take. Yeah, apparently. Well, I, I I wonder if she's going to make it in at all because it because of may, it might because of the snow and the conditions. Maybe. Oh, she's a local writer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, Ann. I I'm sure I've read all your works. I just didn't know your name. Yes, because you didn't see where it says Ann Bauer in the studio. You didn't see that part. No, I did not. All right, I've argued with you enough, Sad Severe. Well, <laughs> I, I will say without you even prompting. I live for that moment. I live Maybe. for that moment, man. <laughs> the next time we chat. <laughs> All right, Sandy. Hey. Well, that'll be Friday, so that's good. Yep. Hey, I got to tell you, I, I think I told you this story. Yes, I did. I, never mind. I won't tell you again about what the, when we go to breakfast every Sunday at Norm's, what the waitress says to me. I don't I, remember. I, 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 I told he JJ shaking his head. I'll see you next week unless you die. That's <laughs> what he says every week. That's what she says every week. Well, it's she, our it's thing. A woman. Yeah. And I told her to tell when I do, when the day comes, I do die and they show up without me. I told her just to bring what I always have, which is, this is why I love Norm's. You can get their deep dish Detroit style pizza. Just bring one out. And Bob said to order it for him and just leave it there. <laughs> Nobody can touch it. Why don't you grow up? Why? <laughs> exactly. All right, Sandy. Thank you, sir. We'll look forward to talking right. to you on Friday again, Pally. I live for Bob's that moment. Hand, <laughs> See ya. Bob's Hands of Your Sports, sponsored by Brad Sean Bryant, personal injury lawyer seeking justice for the injured. Contact Brad Sean Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. We shall take a break. Be right back. More news right after this. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here 
or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com or call Matt at 612-791-2345, 612-791-2345 and work with local professionals you can trust. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and ship issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You are indeed. So what else is happening? Not too much. Not not too much at all. No. So yeah, there's not uh, really too much going on. Uh, there's a, I saw a weird news story about uh, Mount Everest. They're requiring everybody to take their poop down with them because apparently Nepal has had, oh had it with the climbers. But uh, yeah, other than that, there's not a whole lot going on in the world. I have a question. Does anybody do what they're supposed to do anymore? I mean, whether it's climbing mountains, their job, whatever. Does anyone ever finish what they're supposed to do anymore? Probably not. No, there is a lot. No, a lot of people just kind of halfway do it and they'll go, I'll do it, finish it later, and then either forget about it or just don't come back to it. But they don't make enough money. They should be paid more. They won't do their job, but they want to be paid. That's what I love about that. Yeah. Well, especially when you'll get uh, employers that will add more tasks to the daily job and then they're like well we want to get paid more and then that usually causes a big somebody goes on strike god is everybody ever going to grow up is that going to happen why does everybody just do their job and stay the hell out of the way that'd be wonderful not going to yeah. happen no 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 why <laughs> nobody wants to grow up no peter pan forever <laughs> yeah <laughs> peter pan forever honestly god just say whatever uh uh, so what else is in the news? I got I got to find out. There are usually some pretty decent stories on on Mondays, and but I yeah I agree with you guys. I've been going through it, and it just didn't really. Look no, all that wonderful. The news is kind of been dominated by the uh, the terrorist attack in Russia, and the which uh, having all four of those guys not get killed in the midst of the attack, I find yeah. kind of odd. Usually they either kill themselves or killed by the. Uh, SWAT or officers that are stopping the attack. So there were only four of them and they killed 120 people? Yeah, I think it was 137 was the highest number. Really? Yeah. And apparently they were torturing all the, Russia was torturing the four guys, trying to make sure they there weren't anybody else that they were missing. They cut one guy's ear off. They were like electrocuting him. They want Putin to bring back the death penalty so that way they can execute them. But yeah, it's a whole mess over there. 
Yeah, but in Russia, death penalty doesn't mean anything because they have a thing called the disappearance penalty. We're like, oh, whatever happened to Bill? Oh, I don't know. You even know who you're talking about. What? Yeah. How the hell did, because ISIS is taking the credit for this attack. Yep. Yep. How the hell did ISIS set up such a scheme in Russia? Yeah, I don't know. The whole, and like Putin was trying to say that it was somehow dealing with the Ukraine and blah, 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 blah. But I don't, that's a whole mess. I don't understand how you go from, how you coordinate something like that and picking that as the target of all places. I have a question for you. Including all the countries on this planet, name one president you think's doing a good job. Ooh, well, what's uh, what's the guy in? Uh, is there somebody in Egypt? He's probably doing pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> in Egypt, really? <laughs> know, probably Sw- going to Egypt? In Sweden. Sweden's yeah. president. Yeah, Sweden. Got there you go. Yeah. Well, who? What was the country that we we found out last week was like the happiest for like the seventh year in Finland? Was it Finland? Yeah, I think it was Iceland. Finland. Yep. Yeah. Well, was Finland? No, it wasn't you. You're right. It was Finland. Whoever the president of Finland is, I don't. Do they have a president? Maybe it's a prime minister. or Whatever. Whoever's running Finland, they're doing a great job. Everybody else, raise your bar. Yep. Come on. Okay, what's the happiest state in the United States? Ooh, happiest state. It's got to be the one with the least amount of people. <laughs> Rhode Island. Um, yeah, I Rhode you, Island, there you go. I bet you it's going to be like a North Dakota or a, like a Dakota. That's what I would have thought. Let's but see. it's not North Dakota. Okay. Um, according to this, it looks like Hawaii is high up. You're cheating. This guy, we get along with this guys, guy. Guys, we guys guys want to we're gonna we're gonna look up the answers. We got good get... God. I thought Tom set that up like he has a like a like a uh, oh, an article I... in front of him, right? Do Do you have an article? No, oh, I just I know who oh. it is. Oh. oh, okay. I actually do my job twenty four hours a day. I'm like you, hun yucks. Oh God, it's ten forty five. I got to get out of here. Oh my God, yeah. It's... Um, the happiest oh. state in America is Minnesota which I don't understand to be in the happiest state. That's one thing I will tell you about Minnesota, and I've always been very honest about this, and some people get very pissed off at me about this. I, I have found in Minnesota they have the best and the worst people I've ever met in the state of Minnesota. It's true. There are some people that are just sweetheart, wonderful people. They'll break their back for you, bust your ass. And then there are others that will smile on your face and stab you right in the back. That's that passive-aggressive thing. Where did that come from? Where did passive-aggressive even come from? I think it's a lot easier for some people to be passive-aggressive than to be blunt and, like, straightforward with somebody. Yeah, people don't like conflict, so they try to find a nice way to kind of soften whatever insult they're hurling your way. That is not nicer. It's worse (laughs) because you don't see it coming. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a great tactic to use. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I kind of understand where where people's mind frame is when they, like, when oh, they behave that way. Like, oh, Tevin, hey, that's a fantastic shirt. Was it on sale? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm seriously, I have had people smile in my face and stab me right in the back. Then I finally adjusted to it after about the 85th time, and it's like, hey, get away from me. But on the other hand, you have some of the nicest people you will ever meet are from Minnesota. So I don't know what the, what the hell happened to, to be way to the left and way to the right as far as happiness is concerned. I don't get it. Yeah, and I'd be curious as to what they judge happiness out on because True. it seems like we complain a lot about whether it's <laughs> too hot in the summer or it's too cold and snowy in the winter and, and everything sucks, but somehow right. we're on the – makes you think how bad other places must be. And the worst, I guess, the most unhappy place in America is Louisiana. Yeah, that and makes I, sense. Why does it make sense, though? I just – like, what's going on in Louisiana? Like, they got – bad. They got uh, like, New Orleans, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you ever been in New Orleans? Oh, no, I have not. But I like phenomenal. But I feel like all the great vibes and positivity is like within the city limits of, of New it, Orleans. Well, yes. Maybe. Yes. And it's more specifically just Bourbon Street. You step one block left True, or right, right, and it is not a great place to be. <laughs> I told you that story, man. I had a I got a friend. He's down in New Orleans on business. It's two o'clock in the morning. He can't sleep, so he goes down in front of the hotel, sits on the steps to have a cigar. Now it's like three o'clock in the morning in New Orleans. He's sitting on the steps in front of the hotel having well, a, good, a cigar. cigar. And then I got then a, I got huge, a echo. huge echo all of a sudden. All of a sudden what just what happened? happened? I no, no, we don't, I don't hear anything. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's echoing, echoing like a son of a bitch. Somebody, somebody took something. 
No. Nope. Not, I, not up here. No. Nah, well, nah. Yeah, I got a massive echo. Oh, no, it just went away. All right. Yeah, now it's gone. Who the hell knows what caused it? Nice technology. That's all I have to say. Anyway, so my friend's sitting on the two, 3 o'clock in the morning, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I think it was 3 o'clock in the morning. He's sitting there, and this about 7-year-old girl comes skipping by, skipping rope. And she looks at him. She's like 7 at 3 o'clock in the morning. She goes, what are you doing, mister? Because I'm just enjoying my cigar. And the seven-year-old girl goes, well, you better go inside before somebody kills you. <laughs> it's like, my God. She... A seven-year-old girl wandering the streets at three in the morning, threatening to kill someone. So maybe they are unhappy in Louisiana, you think? Yeah, that's not a great place to be if you got a seven-year-old who's like the town crier. Like, get, yeah, get inside before somebody kills you. But you're right. You hang out uh, on the main street there, just hang out, have a great time. There are great diners like Mrs. B's is a wonderful diner, a great place to eat. But you will see some goofballs, man. Oh, yeah. Um, I never miss a cops episode when it's cops in New Orleans. I never miss it, man, when it's going to be on. Because... <laughs> <laughs> when those get they're always dressed up as something they're wearing some kind of outfit you know guys uh guys wandering around with uh, tutus and stuff like that you know it's a real great look but then the fighting starts oh my god unbelievable but if you get a chance i would i've been to new orleans several times if you get a chance i would go but i also if you go to new orleans see now i got that echo again what the hell is it oh now it's gone what would that even be I have no, I have no, not, idea. no idea. That is weird. It pops in and pops out. Oh, God hates me this morning. That's why I've decided. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. Like, that's the only reason that I could think of for it. Because there's <laughs> God hates me. I think, well, I'm just telling the truth. It's all I ever do. You know what I mean? Stealing those uh, palm fronds back as a yeah. kid. This is, is it's coming, coming back, back for you. Yep. I didn't say the F bomb in church. It was somebody else that did it. It wasn't me. <laughs> I will never forget looking at him after he said, I'm like, oh, God, don't hit him with lightning. Because, you know, we're in seventh grade, so I'm at the time, what am I, 10? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I don't want to get struck by lightning because you said the F-bomb up in the sacristy. What the hell's wrong with you? Right? Right. <laughs> oh, by the way, I should mention, I ran into Ben, my buddy down here. Uh, I met him about a week ago. Matter of fact, when we were the same place, I saw Ben and his lovely family again yesterday. So I just want to tell you guys, because we have a big listener in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. He's a That's huge hard. listener. Yeah, he's a great mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, Ben's a great guy. Really good guy. We shall take a break. Be right back. We'll have Kristen Burt ruin the end of the show right after this. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Hi, guys. It's Chris Egger from Channel 5 Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there are so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. 
The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, One of the reasons I regret being on Facebook, I should have never come back, because every day now starts with what's Kristen Burt doing? Oh, she's on the beach today. What the hell is that? I was nowhere near the beach. I was in the desert. (laughs) Oh, you were in the desert? Yes, I was in Palm Desert over the weekend. Oh, I saw Palm Springs. No wonder. Yep, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, both in the desert. Yep. I don't know about that. Palm Beach is the one that's on the water. You're right. No question yes. about it. Yes. If I was so, on the water, I'd be up in Santa Barbara or something like that. Or if you were just boozing it up, like in the one about six, seven days ago you sent, you were already so hammered you didn't even look at the camera. <laughs> it was a selfie. Of course I looked at the camera. No, you did not. You were not looking at the camera. You were like boozing it up. No, no, the question. cup was, everything was like very carefully placed, oh, uh, good angle, good okay. profile, <laughs> nice golden right. light on my face, um, and I can only handle Not about three seconds of sun. That's about it. Okay. Now, I just have one thing, and you're to consider it very, very negative, but you already know it's true. Uh, this is absolute proof that, that the greatest place on earth to live is the United States of America, because Jerry Seinfeld just became a billionaire. He's a terrible actor, and he's not funny in the least, and even he became a billionaire. So that's how great America really is, right? Well, he was never an actor. And I mean, even when he was an actor on Seinfeld. Yeah, but even when he was an actor on Seinfeld, I think he even knew he was a bad actor. Um, It was his comedy, because he was basically just playing himself, and he had a great ensemble cast around him, and the writing was solid. I mean, some of the things are now dated and, and everything, but... At the time, it hit all of the right notes, and he didn't need to act. Yeah, but how about if you're a comedian, you should be funny? How about that? I find his comedy a little bit whiny, but he and Larry David are both kind of whiny to me. Absolutely. (laughs) It's just not my kind of deal. I like it when they come out like Don Rickles. Yeah, you look look like crap. Now, that's comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) God bless him. Hey, Jerry Seinfeld's a billionaire. I'm happy as hell for him. This is America. You tried. You got it done. That's wonderful. But I just... I have never understood why people like Jerry Seinfeld. And plus, he's a prick on top of it. Well, there's that. But I I always go back. Um, I haven't met him because he's more of a New York celebrity. But uh, uh, I always go back and he gets a lot of scrutiny now for his teenage girlfriend back in the day when he was on Seinfeld in the height, height of his fame. Yeah, he's uh, you guys want to hear one of his really famous jokes that I uh, saw him do once? I don't understand this deal with magicians. Here's a quarter. No, it's gone. Who gives a shit? Really? That's a joke? <laughs> I mean, he's not funny in the least. But he's just it. he's basically just an observational, like a, a yeah. day-to-day minutia. And that was his commentary. And it worked really well for Seinfeld, I think, because they, yeah. they were able with um, Jason Alexander and Julie Louis-Dreyfus mm-hmm. and yep. Michael, what's his last name? Plays Kramer. Uh, Kramer. <laughs> yeah, just, and Kramer. You know, Michael, blah, Michael, blah, blah. Kramer. What the hell is his name? That's terrible I don't know his name. I know. He played Kramer. Michael. Michael, AJ, he, dropped gotta... too, he dropped too many end bombs for me at that one performance. Uh, yeah, so. that's terrible. Uh, who's got the, what is his last name? Who got it? Richards. Michael Richards. Michael Richards, of course. Yeah, no wonder. Yeah, stupid, but they were all so good around him that yes. it, yep. that's why it worked. And, and so... Again, yeah, uh, he's um he's a guy from New York. This is America. He became a billionaire. I am very happy for him for that. That's wonderful news. And See, comedy I is. Even... I was going to say comedy is so subjective too. It is absolutely. Yeah. There's no question about it. There's no doubt about it. So what else is happening, sister? Uh, the hunt is on for the next James Bond. What do you guys oh, think? Oh, who who right. should be the next James Bond? If just if you were to throw out a name. Are we going to follow the uh, flow of the world right now? Because if we are, the next James Bond's going to be a black woman. 
it's they're going for a white man. I'll tell you that. Are the, they the really? The name that's been floating out there. Yeah. Ooh. Now, for a long time, Idris Elba's name yeah. was floated out there. And yeah. I personally yep. thought yep. perfection. Like, he's got the looks. He's got the acting chops. Mm-hmm. He's got the yep. muscles. Like, to yep. me, like, guys would love him. Women love him. Great. But it, he just says he never saw himself in the role and wasn't interested whatsoever. Really? Um, and the name that's being thro- thrown around is Aaron Taylor Johnson. I don't know. How does everyone is. feel about that? I think that's terrific. That would get me like excited for James Bond movies again. Okay. Who is that? He uh, he was in Bullet Train. I think that's one of the more recent films that you may know him from. He was the parent. Uh, he was in Tenet. Yes, he's like he's been in some pretty heavy hitters recently. Really, and yeah. Tenet, the the TV series, the movie. The, oh, it's a, yeah. yeah, I've never seen. I've never seen him. Then I don't think. Yeah, I mean, he's got the acting chops. He's British, so I think that they mm-hmm. want to keep it. You know. Yeah. Yep. Um, with that, I don't know. It's it's one of those things. I go. Eh. I'm a little bit like. I mean, I think like he's got. He doesn't excite me. I guess looks wise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Saying he's ugly. No, he's just he's mid. <laughs> he's mid he's mid he's mid he's just average to me but you know what when they put on those tailored suits they give you the right haircut Mm -hmm. you you, they give you the trainer Mm -hmm. maybe all of a sudden i go oh not so bad if that guy's mid i'm literal garbage (laughs) (laughs) oh my god I'm yeah, talking I be... about movie star mid. Do you know what I mean? Like um, Idris Elba to me is like so handsome. Like I look at Idris and I'm like, yes. Um, I don't know. I just always think of James Bond to be like this real rugged guy. And I guess I just don't see Aaron Taylor Johnson as really rugged. But again, they always give them, you know, they like do a little zhuzhing before they step into the the James Bond role. So, you know, I don't think I've seen an entire James Bond movie since Sean Connery retired. You didn't see Casino Royale. I don't think so. Who who now who is that? That was um Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Yeah, I was gonna say Craig. I don't, and think, so. Daniel I don't Craig. think so. Daniel Craig. Good. Yeah, I thought he was really good yeah. in the role. Yeah, he was great. Who is the guy that just stepped aside? Daniel Craig. Oh, that is Daniel mm-hmm. Craig. Okay, yes. so I know who that is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I thought he was okay. Sean Connery had certain class, like, you know shaken not stirred that kind of deal i love that element in him it's like you're doing it wrong he he was he was so good in that role i don't think for me anybody else could have done that role you know not roger moore you weren't a roger moore fan nah he was okay he, yeah pierce brosnan he, didn't last too long no no uh, i just handsome but i didn't feel yeah. like he really embraced what i thought james bond would be it's true it's absolutely true so well so i should give this new guy a shot though you said he's good huh he definitely has the acting chops. I'm saying looks wise, I'm like he's okay. But like I said, if he if he does step into the role, he says he hasn't been officially offered it. But there's enough whispers that I think that they're moving toward mm-hmm. another film because it's been a while. So since Daniel Craig retired, and you know they're very the broccoli family is very very protective of this brand. I love the fact they went through life with the last name of broccoli. That's broccoli great. is delicious. <laughs> It is delicious. I am one of those weird people that craves broccoli. I'm like, <laughs> well, I like broccoli. Bro- I love yeah. it. I put it in everything. Okay, you got to run something by you because we had it on earlier this morning. Because it's Easter on Sunday, and I was asked, "Do I like ham?" And I went, "It's okay. I'm not I don't hate it. I don't love it. What do you think of ham? I love a honey baked ham. Well, I don't want ba- a ham sandwich, but I want a honey baked ham with a little champagne mustard." And oh. some scalloped potatoes. Okay. Mm, and like some veggies on the side. And I am good. Does it have to be spiral sliced? Like it has to be. Ham? It has yeah, to be a honey baked ham. It has to be officially. Like we've one down the street and we'll get one at Christmas. I don't like turkey. So, you know, if I had my choice at Thanksgiving, it'd be a honey baked ham. Really? You don't like turkey? mm Is it not even like the drumstick or anything? No. I just don't like the taste of it. It's I'm not like dry. a big poultry. It's usually dry. Very few yeah. people, I think, make yeah. it really delicious as the mm-hmm. way it should be. I might like a deep fried turkey, maybe, if someone yeah. made yeah. one. Um, but even chicken, I'm weird about chicken. Like I'll eat it, I'll eat like a rotisserie chicken. I don't like cold chicken. It's I like weird. fried chicken. Like it just has to, and at sometimes it it tastes, I don't know, like metallic to me. Is that sound weird? Do you know no, what I mean? Like, really. or maybe like 
gamey. Maybe that's yeah, the word. I don't, I'll eat yeah. chicken wings and chicken drummies, but I don't. Chicken breasts are okay. They're just boring. They don't really have any flavor. If you fry it up, it's good. <laughs> well, I suppose, yeah, that's good. But yeah, chick, chicken drummies and chicken wings, I love. They're wonderful. Yeah, but, that's but invite me to your house for your honey baked ham, and I'm I'm there. Honey baked ham, spiral sliced, and every time I say that, I think of uh, Steve Cannon, legendary announcer at WCCO in Minneapolis, who a guy handed him a piece of copy about doing honey baked ham commercials, and didn't check the uh, the wordage, the verbiage, the words that were used, and. Steve Cannon on the air said, the greatest thing about uh, honey baked ham is it's spittle sliced. <laughs> Instead of spiral, it's dead spittle. It's like, and Nothing. there was a pause. There was a pause and he said, maybe somebody around here could do their job, actually. That would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, Cannon was not happy. There's nothing uh, good better than spit on your food, when it's, <laughs> especially when it's your... not your own. <laughs> Somebody else is spitting all over your food. Oh, yeah. yeah. Th- always be kind to your, your servers, please. Yes. Indeed. Oh, God. Can you imagine how many people have eaten spit and they didn't even know it? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> I, I worked in a restaurant in college, and it's such hard work. And I have to say, I am, even if it's bad service. I'm still nice to the waiter because everybody has a bad day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just, I can't do it. I can't be rude. It's just, it's hard. It's really hard work. Let's just I put understand it that way. Why you, well, that's yeah. very nice of you to do because those people bust their ass about 50 hours a week. So, you know, yeah. I mean, servers work their asses off. I hope people do understand that. Yeah. And, and I don't think unless you've worked in a restaurant or done <clears throat> what they call now a customer facing job, then oftentimes things are out of your control. So the waiter yeah, might be bringing yep. your meal late. You have to realize what's going on in the kitchen, what's happening at front of house. So many things happen. And I'm um, just understanding how the restaurant is operating as a whole can affect the waiter's job. I suppose that is true. But I'm always, well, my mother was a server for and a diner for 53 years. So I am always very nice to my servers because when I was a teenager, I used to stand there and watch people and I'd, Go outside and mention to him, don't ever do that again. That was my job. What do you think? A little security action? Yeah, it's like, don't ever talk to her that way again. Or do you like chewing with your teeth? Do you like that part? Because you ain't going to have any if you ever do that again, I'll tell you that. (laughs) Yeah, guys didn't do that much in my neighborhood. They didn't put up with that bullshit, which I like, actually. But, you know, so you got, are are you going somewhere for Easter on Sunday? Uh, no, I am staying home and doing my taxes. Doing your taxes? Why are you doing your taxes I have taxes to do my so taxes. Early? My my tax... Are you kidding? April 15th is almost here. I know. So I'm, it's three weeks from now. You got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. No, my accountant's asking for my taxes, and oh, I haven't God. done things. So I got to spend the weekend getting everything all together for them. Um, but yeah, no, uh, we, we had a big, big old weekend in Palm Desert this weekend. My husband was performing and there was a wild windstorm and the performance was outside. It was wild. Let's just put it that way. I've never yeah. seen anything like it. So how about you guys? You guys do anything for Easter? Uh, no, I might go to my mom's house, but usually pretty low key for Easter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. I think a little dinner with my parents and my see my grandma who kind of lives around that area and about it so now what what will they serve probably probably ham so probably ham yeah Kristen will mail you some or something uh <laughs> easter you know, ham Brussels easter sprout. ham in the mail yeah you know, it'll show up it'll, i'm sure it'll be just fine you yeah. know yeah that'll be tasty i'm sure <laughs> thank you ready. can't wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be tough because like i said Catherine's birthday is on easter this year so is it an easter dinner is it a birthday dinner what do we got Right. It is an Easter dinner on Easter, and then it is her birthday month. So hopefully you have been celebrating all month long. The whole 31 days? Uh-huh. Because she's born on the 31st of March. That's so right. there you have it. Or you can do all of April for her if you forgot to start celebrating March 1st. You, uh, have you ever met Catherine in person? Have I met you in person? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't met but I'm Catherine. just here to tell you, I, I asked you that because I know you haven't met her in person because 365 days a year is Catherine Day. I want you to know that. That's just <laughs> how life is. KV1 is the boss. KV1 is definitely the boss. There's no, there's no getting around that. No question. I want to mention something because I know you got to go, but Catherine and I watched the final episode of uh, Jodie Foster in True Detective. Mm-hmm. Did you see that? 
I have not finished the season yet. God, is she good. Yeah, you know what? A couple episodes are not very good, but the final episode is terrific, and she is amazingly good. And she always, since she's a little kid, she's been a great actor. If you go back to, like, Taxi Driver and yeah, realize yep. that she was 12 in that role, yeah. it's a very adult role to play, too. Um, she's incredible in it, playing opposite Robert De Niro. It's unbelievable yep. when you think about it. And, I, I mean, honestly, has she put out a bad movie? I mean, No. Where you're like, oh, that really was a terrible Jodie Foster. Because the movie can be bad, but have you mm -hmm. ever said a bad Jodie Foster performance? I don't think so. It's so interesting because the entire series, and I, I think they're like six episodes, I think seven maybe, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But she, I would say as she's the chief of police in an Alaska town, and she drops the F-bomb about every other sentence. And it's, I mean, she's sworn before, but she swears like a madman in this one. I mean, she's always pissed off at somebody. She's always swearing at somebody. She is so good in it. It is unbelievable. Gotta I can't wait to watch the final episode then. I think oh, I have like that, two left. So oh, that final episode is really good. I'm good. just here to tell you. All right, sister, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Today, you guys, I'll, hopefully I'll have some stories for you tomorrow. I am spending the day with Kerry Washington and Halle Berry, and Ooh. Jane Fonda, and Dr. Jill Biden. Really? Yeah. Um, well, there's this big summit really today to yeah, at, the, at the Getty Center. So I am on my way right now to go and hang out with them for a day of unreasonable conversation. That is the name of the summit. <laughs> have you ever spent any time with Jane Fonda? I have, yes. She's one of the nicest people you will ever meet. But the only I thing love her. A bit upsetting to me about it because she was so sweet to me. It was on, she gave me a hug and all that stuff. She's very sweet, but you could tell by looking in her eyes the damage that her father did to her. Not right? an easy upbringing. No, it was not. Mm -mm. What a prick! Oh God, what a prick! But yeah, that's your word of the day. <laughs> we started yeah, with Seinfeld. In... We end with Fonda. <laughs> good point. That's a very good point. You're absolutely right. All right, young lady, we will talk to you tomorrow, though, right? Yes, I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. That is going to do it. The uh, family show is on in about 15 minutes. Thanks.